1998, and after impressively clean sweeping Ireland, England and Wales in their warm-up matches, it was soon down to the serious business of the Tri-Nations. It started with a visit to Western Australia for the first ever test match to be played in Perth. Uh, just calling the tune at the moment, and there have been some fiery clashes. Van der Vesthuizen slams his way through the Aussie defence from a quick tap. Leo was there. Gregan now. South Africa's turn to hold on. Joe Roth. Great pass. Larkham. Tommy Bowen. the boot of Percy Montgomery edged the Springboks into the lead, a lead which looked to be only temporary when Matt Burke lined up this kick. Just to put them back out to a two-point lead. He's missed it again. The narrowest of wins for South Africa. Seven days later, and it was the All Blacks in Wellington. Percy Montgomery put the Springboks into the lead early on. Second penalty goal for Percy Montgomery, 6-3. to three. Now for the best, Tyson. Honeyball's doing a lot more kicking now. This is a not a bad looking kick. Wilson sauntering back. You'll have to get rid of it again. Well, has the pendulum swung? In every game, the pendulum swings. South Africa in a great attacking position here. This man, Henry Honeyball, put the pressure right on New Zealand. Perfectly placed kick. Wilson and Cullen, a little bit of communication breakdown. Wilson scrambling it into touch. This is the result. Otto. Now Van der Vestes into Teichman, to Smith. He's taken by Randall, comes back very smartly. Garvey. Mobile front row forward. And they'll get the put in too, the South Africans. As we count down, just over 10 minutes left. Well, it's a Springbok turn to have an attacking scrum. I think this is the first scrum they've had inside the All Black 25 in the whole match with their loose head. New Zealand, of course, have had perhaps eight or nine. And the best days in Honeyball. Oh, big gap! Peter Rousseau! A rare win for the Springboks in New Zealand. The Tri-Nations title was definitely on. But first, they had to deal with a wounded all-black side. Mark Andrews really so strong in those short lineups. <laughs> South Africa have it. Honey ball. Bringing in Erasmus, who's playing with a scrum cap today. He's very often used in the midfield as that link just to drive him. But that ball is a little sluggish in coming out. Can Peter Miller do something with it? Well, Snyman's got it. Montgomery, a big hit on him, but he stays on his feet. Now Stephen to Blanche. He's got support, but he was unable to find it. Can he go? He's off. He's over. Ter Blanche's try, one of four, which secured another one-point victory for the Springboks in this Tri-Nations. This meant that South Africa knew that victory over the Wallabies in Johannesburg would confirm a first Tri-Nations title to add to the World Cup they'd won in 1995. But the Wallabies were dangerous opponents, having also won in New Zealand this season. 
However, nobody in Ellis Park expected anything other than a Springbok victory, which only created more pressure for Nick Mallet's men. Good work at the back by Tashman, but he's quickly bottled up by the Australians. And he has the drive. This is Adrian Garvey. They've got to drive uh, the Australians off the ball and not allow them to regroup. Rasmus, uh, rather Rousseau, Skinstad standing off. Hands off, Gold! So for the third time now, South Africa come at them. Skinstad. Skinstad through, what a beautiful dummy. And Bobby Skinstad with a big dive. Believe me, he has enjoyed that. And so, an historic achievement for the Springboks. Whenever you play Australia and New Zealand, it's always going to be a hard game and a tight game. And I think the defence between all three sides in this tournament is incredible. And, uh, you know, we're just fortunate that in the second half it came, uh, came right for us and we scored some nice tries. A nice try scored at the back of the lineup with uh, Adrian Garvey. But all the, way through, all the way through the game, you know, it's kept tight and uh, it's a difficult game to play.